Going back out into the hostile surface wasteland of KKND2 requires a lot of serious preparation. Nowhere is truly safe, and when you finally have that old enemy in your sights, you confirm the target, take careful aim and... Ultra fire. I've got a better idea. And think to yourself, ah, oh, what the hell. After a devastating nuclear war that understandably turned the planet's surface into a radioactive pile of nothingness, the brave remnants of humanity once again leave the relative safety of their underground bunkers in a determined effort to reclaim the surface. Having now recovered from the less than successful previous attempts, along with newly rebuilt mechanized cavalry, it's finally time to rewrite history and win as heroes, rather than be known as cowards who are apparently smart enough to live to fight another day. The reason taking back the surface is so difficult, besides the obvious environmental hazards of course, can be attributed to the people who were not lucky enough to cozy up in a sealed bunker as the bomb dropped so long ago. Bam! This part of humanity, having no adequate protection from the many fancy global changes, has evolved into a race of tribal warriors with a curious preference for limited use of technology. The, gods test us, the effects of long-term surface exposure have resulted in various physical mutations, making them very different from what they once were. Much of this fuels the conflict we find ourselves in, and the world is so increasingly dangerous that accidentally stepping into huge mutant mammoth crap is the least of your worries. It's said that these groups just don't get along and neither side seems to hold the value of somewhat different human life in high regard anymore at this point, all nuclear things considered. And if that doesn't paint a good enough picture of what KKND2 is all about, this time around there's an additional threat roaming the wastes, with the only important directive being vengeful search and destroy. Before the super smart geniuses who launched the nukes turned everything into apocalyptic rubble, humanity apparently enjoyed considerable success in the field of agricultural production through robotic worker systems. One such series of robots survived the well-known devastation, and having seen their destroyed crops, started working their way up from humble farming origins toward finding a new purpose for functioning. Oh yes, I've got time! <laughs> These machines logically concluded that the best way to stay true to what they were originally created for would be to eliminate humanity for ruining their happy farming activities, and use their remains as fertilizer. No, some groups just don't get along. As you jump into the earth blood of KKND2, the choice of which faction to side with in conquering the surface is always at your enthusiastic disposal. Each route offers an immediate shot of nostalgia, a very different thematic atmosphere, a bunch of fun gameplay mechanics, and the hilarious realization that nobody really takes this wasteland seriously. The survivors, an army of human remnants, which are definitely, completely, 100% the wisest and most reasonable people around, with a classic preference for old Earth-style military tactics and efficient cavalry. The Evolved, tribal mutants that have adapted to dangerous surface life over the years and have learned to herd, weaponize, and take full advantage of other mutated creatures and animals along the way. The Series 9, robotic machines that have advanced beyond their original farming functionality with the vengeful aim of destroying all humans and mutants through heavier hitting self-armament. Although the game makes sure each faction is mirrored in ways you'd expect from a balanced experience, each side has a different flavor of gameplay attached. You can expect the survivors to play roughly like a standard army, with many soldiers running around along with tanks and the usual vehicle types that keep everything moving forward. Damn it! Enemy reinforcement sighted! While the Evolved are more of an agile unknown type of force, where you can get away with something different while still having some kind of human origin in the mix. Enemy attack party sighted. As for the Series 9, even the infantry are tougher death machines, so it's less about going for massive unit numbers and more about using things efficiently. Channels open it to kill. The game is a classic RTS in all its glory, with the addition of a few cool twists that make it a little more interesting to play. I want this problem gone, and I don't care how. Standard operating procedure is building up a base, harvesting resources, and pumping out units to defeat your enemies. Power is the name of the game. Mobile oil derricks are driven to oil sources, then deployed as a structure. Building online. Tankers automatically harvest the oil and return it to your base for processing. Although oil reserves are not always infinite and can become pretty scarce as the conflict drags on, you'll eventually also have to rely on income generating structures such as certain types of energy collectors, which sometimes come in the form of a... Uh... What the hell? 
but there are some tactical limits to consider in advance. Things like base defense turrets as well as the income generating structures are usually limited to only 4 for building type, so you have to think a bit about the base building process as you go. Just remember that not all base building mechanics unlock on their own as you build things up. Wisdom prayers begin. Key structures need to be manually upgraded in order to progress up the technology tree and gain access to more advanced units and features. You really don't want to miss out on having giant missile launcher crabs stomping around now, do you? There's also some unit customization where you can attach parts and weapons onto a base hull if you're feeling a bit more creative. Another cool feature are old earth tech bunkers. These are often locked for a while, but if you manage to be the first one to capture the damn things, you'll be rewarded with powerful, rare units that usually can't be obtained any other way. I do love the kaboom! As cool as having an unstoppable army and amazingly built up base can be, it just wouldn't feel right without a fittingly great soundtrack doing its part in setting the magical mood of Crush, Kill and Destroy Crossfire. The music that makes this journey even more memorable is something I've always looked forward to, as each faction instantly feels more alive once you hear those familiar melodies come in to help you conquer the wastes. Out of all the reasons you can fall in love with this game, the soundtrack somehow always seems to find its way up to the top. Especially a few specific musical moments, which are almost impossible to get out of one's head going forward. The technical problems plague us again, Gahanaho. Maybe the gods test us, or maybe we use crap technology. Let's move on. KKND2 is a very interesting mix of serious life and death stakes, with strangely lighthearted comedic relief dropped in all over the place. Add in some of the more uplifting musical tracks, and you've got something that isn't quite as easy to explain, just going by the introductory video and gameplay alone. You're supposed to take this dangerous world seriously, but you're also not supposed to take it seriously at all. This dark game is so playful and memorable. I've had a huge amount of fun with this game growing up, and I'm happy to say that the experience remains as nostalgic and enjoyable as ever. Notably because of all of the interactive and atmospheric features that come together in one crazy package. It's quite interesting that the story of KKND revolves around civilization trying to rebuild after so many disasters and nuclear fallout, and that instead of focusing on the potential of combined strengths and cooperation, even more conflict and hatred towards slightly different forms of existence seem to always take priority, albeit under a good layer of integrated comedy. And also, those damn robots are bombing the crap out of us. Our camp is in trouble. The overall aesthetic presents everything as destroyed and hopeless. And even though the artistic direction falls in line so perfectly with the game's storyline and theme, many elements carry along an odd sense of vibrant positivity for the player to enjoy and think about. If we set aside each faction's perhaps unreasonably directed hatred for one another, and pull the brakes on the funny bits for a moment, we can see that each side has indeed found new ways of pushing forward past a lot of continuous pain and loss. The survivors have endured a lifetime in underground shelter conditions, but are always working on re-establishing human civilization on the surface. The Evolved had the unfortunate fate of being left out in an extremely hazardous environment, but have come to accept their situation and now thrive as a new type of culture. The Series 9 went through their main purpose in life being nearly erased and had to completely upgrade and reinvent themselves in the hopes of one day getting some of that existential fulfillment back. Higher reasoning is sometimes found to be irrationally limited, even more so when we put in the game's darker humor back into the mix. This is intentional, of course, as it's likely just meant to be a fun game to play. But beyond all the melodic action, deadly jokes, and unreasonable all-or-nothing determination, all three sides have managed to somehow continue moving forward. It's just a shame that by the end of things, they never try to somehow coexist, at least in some limited form, if at all possible. Just like in our real world, where many people sadly often look at others only through themselves and their own experiences, instead of putting in the required mental and emotional work to see, listen, and understand others closer to how they actually are, 
The conflicted sides of KKND are unable to recognize the similarities in their struggles to move forward and make the best out of a really bad situation. Mental activity, such as our usual daily thoughts, does not always constitute thinking, and as many people continue to just habitually react to others rather than learning how to consciously take in, think and respond, the real world sometimes moves that much closer to what we can see happening in KKND. Having different philosophies and conflicting belief structures is nothing new, but basic levels of getting along can be reached by a decision, choosing to cooperate with the aim of finding mutually beneficial common ground. It's not exactly true that some groups just don't get along. They just never made the decision to pay the price and put in the energy required to learn how to communicate and understand each other. Even though it's unfortunately always much easier to go crush, kill and destroy, such a move will, more than likely, eventually have you end up in the crossfire. What the hell?